Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So today I am going to show you off another pen in my collection and this is the Classic Pens LB5. Uh, now, uh, if you've uh, watched my um, uh, Classic Pens LM1 video, you'll know that the, the, the backstory to this. But for those that, that haven't watched it, uh, I'll just give you a, a brief intro. So. I picked this pen up from Sarge, the one-man pen show, at the um, uh, London UK Pen Show in October 2017. Um, I went to the show um, with what I thought was a reduced but very sizable budget. Uh, I was hoping to get some Visconti fountain pens. Uh, there were Viscontis there, but uh, they were all of the models that I already had. There were some lovely Pelican M800s, M1000s, some Rardens there, uh, lots of um, Yurushi, uh, Nakayas, um, some modern uh, Day Parkers. Um, th there were lots of lovely pens there, but none that like completely spoke to me. Uh, and then I, 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 I knew which vendors would be there uh, at the show, and uh, I, I quickly then hurried around to Sarge, to see what lovely offers Sarge had on at his table. And uh, I, I looked at some of the uh, Visconti Copernics, which were quite nice. Ideally, I would have loved to have got a um, Amandi Simone Club um, or an Omas Arco at that point. Um, I did actually pick one up later from Sarge, um, and he came through for me on that one. Um, but um, he had some classic pens, and... Uh, my ultimate goals for the show was basically to try and get an Armando Simone Club or Omar Sarko, um, a If I couldn't get that, a, a Sailor King of Pens uh, would be great. Ultimately, a Classic Pens LB5 in flame red would have been the best. Now, unfortunately, uh, I wasn't able to get it in, in the uh, flame red, but I was able to get an LM1 in the flame red. So I quickly snapped that up from Sarge. And I also snapped up this LB5 as well. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just show you the box here. This is the uh, LB5 Kaseki. Now, what I will do though is before doing that, I'll show you what else comes in the box. You actually get a um, booklet here, which says, uh, the, congratulations on your new LB5 King Profit Pen. At Classic Pens, we take pride in the art and craftsmanship that is built into our products, and our commitment is endorsed by the Lifetime Warranty and Certificate of Authenticity. You get a Lifetime Warranty um, to be free from defects in materials and workmanship for the life of the pen to the original purchaser. Now, I wasn't the original purchaser on this pen, um, but uh, the pen works absolutely flawlessly. And then the Certificate of Authenticity, Classic Pen certifies that this is an authentic LB5 King Profit fountain pen and it is manufactured to our existing specification in material and workmanship. Each fountain pen is fitted with a 21 karat gold nib, a medium broad or the hand-crafted Nagahara crosspoint and features a cartridge converter filling system. Now, Nagahara, so let me um, tell you about that in a moment, but... Let me just show you the certificate here. This is the uh, LB5 certificate, and this uh, is the anniversary Shizen Nature pen of the Sailor King Prophet. This is number 47. So, and this is a limited edition of 50 in each pen. Now, you have uh, the Cayenne which is the Violent Flames or, or Flame Red, the Kauseki, the Metal Ore, the Midoriji, the New Green Trees, the Teriku, the Continent, and Tensui Raindrops. Now, I might be butchering that a little bit, um, but uh, I, I have the Kauseki. So, um, it talks about Sailor King Prophet. So, this basically is a pen that is modelled uh, after the Sailor King of Pens. And... This is, if I just take it out of the box, in all essence, a Sailor King of Pen. It's actually made by Sailor uh, for classic pens. It has the Sailor 21 carat nib in there, but you can just see this material 
the Kaoseki Brown is absolutely stunning. Uh, it's just a wonderful material. And um, I, I, so I had the option of picking up the white version or the, the brown version. And I had both in my hands. I also had the LM1 in my hand as well. Uh, I'd already guaranteed I was taking at least the LM1 and one of the LB5s. I, at that point, I couldn't afford uh, all three pens. Uh, in hindsight, I wish I had. Um, and I let the, the white one go and it went fairly quickly uh, within a couple of days, I think, of the show. But um, I'm so glad I picked this up. This nib is so lovely. Uh, Sailor nibs are really nice. It's a bouncy nib. It's a king of pen nib. So it is a large, large nib. But if you look at here, though, uh, you can see the, the, the cap finial here. It's, it's rounded. Um, you, you then have the cap band and the, the clip. And then you, it comes down. Uh, it flares out slightly. And it comes down here. And then you have, it says, Sailor LB5 Kawaseki. And then 47 out of 50. And you can see this material is absolutely stunning. I think the brown really shows off a lot more than some of the other colours I've seen. Uh, but it's really when the light actually hits the pen. This is when you see it the most. And then uh, the body tapers down uh, to the end cap here. You have another gold ring. And then you get a more pointed end cap here. Now, obviously, it's a piston, it's a cartridge converter, not a piston filler, so that is not operational. But as you'll see here, though, if I unscrew the cap and then try and show you the nib, it's a lovely Sailor King of Pen nib. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful nib. Um, now, to be completely honest, ideally what I was hoping for was the Classic Pens LB5 in the flame red with a uh, Nagahara cross point nib. Now that would have been the best I could have walked away with. But to be honest, I knew that that was not achievable. And, and to be honest, I didn't even think getting an LB5 was achievable, let alone an, an LM1 and an LB5. Um, or even potentially two LB5s. So um, I'm really glad I was able to pick this up from Sarge. So let me zoom out a little bit and I'll unscrew the bowel and you can see here. Now this is using the Sailor King of Pen converter. So it is, a, it, it is different than a standard Sailor converter. You actually have an ink window here that you can see. Um, and uh, now, I have heard some people complain about the the Sailor converters leaking over time. I have not had this yet happen to to uh, either this pen or my Sailor 19, uh, 1911 with a Naganata uh, Naga, uh, Naga Togi nib on it. Um, but uh, I know um, a number of people have complained uh, in the past that they do leak. Um, but so far, I have not had a problem. So this is a really, really lovely pen. Um, it's not a cheap pen. Um, the price on these are actually going up uh, over time. So if you get a chance to get one at a really, really good price, pick one up. Because this, these are probably one of a few uh, pens, uh, maybe the Arco pens, some of the Omas pens and that, that will increase over time. Uh, not every um, pen from Omos would, um, and likewise, maybe not every pen from, from Classic Pens would. But the LB5s definitely are going up in price. So if you can get one, get one, pick one up, because these are stunning, stunning pens. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll do a size uh, check, a weight comparison, and, uh, and then a writing sample. So... In terms of length, tape measure out, we're looking at 160 millimeters. Now, although this is a king of pen, this is actually around five millimeters longer than a standard king of pen. 
Now, the cap itself is around 73 to 74 millimeters. And then we'll take the cap off and look at the body of the pen. I'll stop this rolling. And then we're looking at around 137 millimeters in length. So that is quite an oversized pen. So let's do a weight check on this so you can see here what they will what, what, what the pen will come in at. So the pen itself, now this is fully inked. This is just oh dead on 41 grams. The cap itself, just a smidgen over 17 grams. And then the pen itself, if I can stop this rolling, is just over 21 and a half grams. So, so around like 20 grams, I would say is a um, pretty good um, pen uh, in terms of weight. So just look at this finish here. This is amazing. The, the amount of chatoyance that you get off of that uh, diffusion bonded acrylic. Uh, and literally it's layers and layers of acrylic fused together. Um, and it is stunning, stunning material. Um, and then basically they just cut, cut rods out of this. Um, it's, it is just an amazing finish. Um, if I get the chance to pick up some other LB5s in different colours, then I think I will probably, because I really love this nib. Um, and I'll show you in a little bit, because uh, this um, will, uh, you'll see it a little bit when, when, when I write with it. But let's um, do a um, size comparison check with other pens. the LB5 in place. So we have uh, left to right, we have the uh, Pelican M600 Turquoise White, we have the Pelican M800 Royal Gold Raden, the M1000 Pelican, uh, a Twisby Diamond 580 AL, we have the Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra Arco, that's a mouthful, we have the Classic Pens LB5 in Kauseki colour. We have a, a Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age Lava. We have a um, Lamy uh, Lux, or LX. Uh, this is effectively an all-star um, with a um, uh, gold trim and a black nib. Uh, we have the Edison Collier and we have an Edison Perlet. So, so you, hopefully this gets you a little bit more of an idea in terms of the size of this pen. And this pen, uh, generally speaking, um, the um, M1000 and the Visconti Homo Sapiens are always considered to be oversized pens. And, and this is longer. So not quite as long as the Armando Simone Club, but it's not far off. Um, so uh, this really is an oversized pen for sure. So let's do a writing sample. This is the classic pens LB5. Kauseki in a uh, medium and the ink I have in here is Mont Blanc Toffee Brown. Now You'll see here, in terms of line variation, this is without any pressure whatsoever. So this is very narrow. And then you can, because it's a sailor nib and it's 21 carat, you can push a little bit more out of it. Now, because it's 21 carat, it's more softer, I wouldn't want to push that anymore. That is as, as far as I will ever push this nib. 
Uh, but let's do some squiggles. That bit of skip was me, not the pen. That bit there. And then you can see here. So there is quite a bit of line variation that you can see here. If I just zoom in a little bit. Here you go. So you can actually see, well, I've been pushing on the downstroke more. There is line variation there. Um, it's not vintage flex, it's not semi-flex, but this nib itself is a very, very bouncy nib. So let's do some wetness tests, shall we? So it's quite a wet nib. It's not an overly wet nib. It's not a fire hose, but that in itself is pretty wet. So um, I absolutely love this pen. It has a bit of a, a sort of bounce or a spring to the nib. Um, it's a lovely, lovely nib. And um, I would definitely pick up more uh, pens from... Uh, the, the LB5s from Classic Pens, if I can, because I really do love the feel of this pen. Uh, I would love a broad nib on it, and I would even better love a cross-point nib. But I think those are probably so rare, or at least the cross-point nib is, that I think that will probably not be possible. Um, you can swap um, the... The uh, LB5 sections with other King of Pens, apparently. Uh, I don't have another King of Pens, so I cannot try that. But uh, as I understand it, you can. So uh, it's possible that you might be able to get a different nib. And rather than having to pull the nibs out, you could just swap the sections. Because the section is a black section. So that's really it for the review today. Um, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.